Today I'm gonna show you how to uh, trace in Linux and uh, uh, with with F trace. I'm Derek. I'm from. I work for Debian. Debian is a Debian-based Linux distribution. It's a elegant and I think uh, user friendly. Uh, maybe you should try it. Uh, it's my agenda. So, uh, I will introduce you uh, why F trace Spark can e do for you. And uh, we have a uh, case study at, uh, at, uh, later. <coughs> yeah. F trace is a, a tracing framework in the Linux kernel, and uh, it's uh, developed by uh, Steven Rusty. Uh, released at uh, uh, 2009, uh, 2008, uh, so it's quite mature now. Um, it's this mask designed by uh, sorry, I, I forgot the name. <laughs> sorry, it's copied from uh, Brendan Gregg's uh, blog. Okay. Uh, F-Trace is a, uh, you can treat it as a logger. Uh, it can log uh, almost everything occurred in Linux system, from kernel to user space. So is it the mainline? Yes. And then, uh, very uh, mature and stable. You can use it in uh, your production environment without any uh, unstable issue or crash your kernel. So I, it's, it's the tracing me mechanism I prefer to use. If you are using uh, something like uh, system tab, you, uh, you write your uh, script and uh, it build to uh, it convert to C and uh, uh, generate a native Linux module and then uh, inject in your kernel. Mm, you have to ensure that uh, the the binary and uh, your kernel is match or the generated code is safe for your kernel. Or you will. Uh, for example, if you need to uh, make your kernel crash, something like that. And the uh, F-Trace uh, is very efficient because uh, uh, the log is occurred in a kernel. Everything is in kernel without user space involved. Uh, it log every uh, event in the uh, read buffer. So uh, if the you if it run out of space, the old uh, kernel line, uh, sorry, log line will be removed. And uh, how can you uh, use that log? You just use cat to a file or with. Uh, for example, trace command is a new new command also developed by Stephen Rust. So you can uh, pass it or with uh, kernel shock you can visualize it. Uh, the uh, event source is from four kinds of uh, mechanism. One is uh, the predefined static uh, trace point, which is uh, uh, defined by kernel developer in uh, every subsystem, and uh, uh, grouped by by the same name. And second one is m count. Uh, m count is uh, it's a function. If you uh, compile your code with uh, with GCC, 
uh, and the uh, dash PG uh, parameter, you will generate uh, all your, uh, you will insert a function call to the MCOM file uh, in the entry point of all your file. So you can profile your uh, C plus plus program. So uh, the kernel developer use that mechanism to um, make every function tracing uh, can be done. And the uh, KPro, UPro is a uh, more advanced uh, dynamic probing mechanism. You can insert a uh, probe point at any anywhere in the kernel. Uh, but this oh, U probe is for the uh, user space application. So uh, once the probe point uh, uh, once the CPU runs through the core point, you will uh, emit in band and uh, you can collect uh, parameter, um, global variable, uh, value from register, something like that. It's a very powerful and uh, I think it's uh, mature now, this tool, because um, at first, uh, the second one, you probe. Uh, you insert your uh, probe point into application uh, without uh, instruction aligned to your CPU. You will make it uh, infinity loop or single fold. Uh, those are the information we can collect while the event occurs. For example, uh, the time of uh, a function call or exe and uh, every ent entry and the exe of a function. So the function is what kind of function? Uh, every function. The kernel and user space? Yes. Um, okay. With, with, static, uh, with encountering the fun uh, kernel function, that's almost every function in kernel. So the if you enable all the um, trace point, this kind of trace point, the uh, rebuffer will be flooded. That's a lot of event goes through your if you cat your know, But user land also. If I have a library in the user land, I can also use this? Yes, yes. You can use it with uh, UPro. And uh, uh, a lot of situations, uh, the problem is uh, you have to trace from user space deep into your kernel to figure out what part of kernel is. Uh, for example, uh, lower your throughput or your uh, increase the latency. Uh, you can uh, observe that with with uh, F trace. It is uh, what the, uh, what a, a log line looks like. The command and the PID which is CPU, the occur, uh, event uh, occur, and time span, uh, time stamp, and uh, which function is called, uh, just, uh, I extract only one line, but there's a lot. So you can check your kernel config with a uh, grip to see if it's enabled, but uh, nowadays uh, almost every distribution is enabled. So you 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 don't have to build your own, own kernel. The config, 
that one is it in the build system or in the... So how do I know whether my, my system uh, F3 is enabled? Okay, uh, it's in boot. Uh, uh, the system I'm using is uh, DP, uh, the uh, kernel image uh, installed in boot uh, and the sys map, system map and the config also in the in this uh, directory. So it's not a uh, developing development uh, environment. It's a production environment. You can you can find it. So uh, in production environment uh, with F trace, you don't have to install uh, tools to help you uh, work with F trace. You uh, you use uh, you you use F trace uh, with bash is enough. Bash script is enough. Uh, F trace uh, expose its interface uh, through the debug FS. So you first you CD to the sys kernel debug tracing directory and uh, echo the name of the event to set event this file and uh, echo one to enable the tracing so the kernel will do the job for you you know user space involved and uh, uh, in the same directory you can find all the events list in the available event file all the event are list uh, can be find found in this file and the group uh, group with prefix with its group and group name and the uh, event name so you can use group uh, grape to find the event you want then echo to the set event uh, if you have uh, multiple event want to trace you just append to this file and a cat can use to check uh, what uh, events we are tracing if you want to trace all the system code uh, just echo the group name syscalls to this file so you can echo the event name or you can echo the group name if you echo the group name all the events in this group will add to this file just like uh, this kind of tracing just like uh, F, uh, S trace but uh, more e efficient mm, but since uh, F trace uh, won't resolve the parameter type for you, so uh, for example, if the if a parameter is uh, a string, it just print the address for you, not uh, not a string content. <coughs> so uh, we enable the tracing and the cat trace file. You can find all the uh, trace log in it. And uh, zero to turn, turn off. And uh, echo nothing to trace to clean the ring buffer. And uh, echo nothing to set event to uh, clean the, to remove all the uh, trace event. So it here is the uh, case study. Uh, we uh, there's a uh, user process uh, which block the system D shutdown procedure uh, until uh, the until system uh, tie tied down and uh, killed it. Since the system is in 
in shutdown stage, we it's hard to uh, execute uh, another program to monitor the season, or uh, this kind of process will be killed. And uh, um, because a uh, user session is composed by a, no, uh, a lot of user process, so. Uh, you cannot, you cannot just uh, check this line uh, to see which process is blocking the system. So uh, either you can uh, write some plugin to systemd to log the information which process is tied down, or you can trace it with a trace because kernel do that for you. So uh, we need to collect some information to identify the process, which uh, process uh, blocked the shutdown. So uh, maybe signal, uh, who send signal, uh, when send signal, and uh, who receive it. And, uh, when the process exit, uh, just 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 this kind of information, uh, I think is enough to identify why the uh, user session tied down and uh, why uh, which process is blocking the shutdown. So then we create a script in the lib system D, system shutdown, this uh, script is named debug.sh. This script will uh, be uh, invoked by system D uh, before it, uh, it turn, turn off your, uh, or reboot your system. And uh, here we remount uh, root and uh, cat the uh, rebuffer to a file, then the shutdown download at a root directory, and then change and uh, add the uh, executable permission to it. Then we enable ftrace, just this simple. You echo uh, kill related system function, uh, system call to the setting band, and uh, uh, this one is signal deliver. Is when when the uh, kernel deliver the signal to uh, particular process. This this one will be uh, will be uh, emit. And uh, this one is scheduler. Uh, uh, this one is uh, emit by scheduler when the process when a process exit. So. Uh, this four in information, this four events, this uh, four kinds of information can tell us uh, how to uh, identify the uh, blocking process. Then we change uh, we change the clock to the uh, trace clock to F trace. Uh, since um, if you have multiple CPU, uh, the clock will not sync because that will be uh, not so info, uh, efficient. So we default, default one is uh, CPU local clock. Uh, since we want to make sure the timestamp is uh, consistent and uh, can be sold. So uh, we, echo, uh, we use the global uh, trace clock. So the timestamp will be consist uh, among the uh, CPU, and then we enlarge the trace buffer to 40 megabytes. So uh, can uh, store a lot of trace trace line, a uh, trace log, and then we use the uh, it's called the uh, tracer, an uh, NLP tracer. It's a simple one. Uh, I okay. 
uh, it's uh, in the F trace. There are a lot of uh, tracer you can use to uh, generate a, a different kinds of event and uh, information. Uh, but uh, I didn't mention it uh, earlier. Uh, we can talk about it <laughs> later. And uh, we clean the ring buffer and uh, start the tracing before we shut our system down. And uh, after we reboot our system, we can check our log. And uh, the log is not so user uh, human friendly. So I process it with uh, a simple batch script. Now you can uh, sort and uh, uh, find which process is uh, blocking the system. You can see here uh, the timestamp is uh, about five seconds. And the next time, this one got a, sim a signal, it's a number nine, uh, means six kill. So this process is uh, make the shutdown process tied out and uh, being killed by the uh, system D. So uh, the boot issue, you want to increase the boot, uh, reduce the boot time, you can use F trace also because uh, because you can enable F trace at the kernel command line. So you enable it and uh, trace, for example, uh, which process open uh, which file and uh, uh, spend how many times it on it uh, and uh, uh, how many process uh, fork and uh, exec uh, execute something like that. So you can uh, collect those information and uh, visualize it. So you can identify why your boot, boot time is so long. So I, I do think F-Trace is amazing. Although uh, it cannot, um, it's not so efficient to process all this log uh, at user space. Uh, those are the information you may interest in. Any question? So, so let's say there's uh, there's something, some problem that's causing the kernel or the system to lock up. Yeah. Okay. System freeze, or maybe yes. there's uh, there's a hardware fault, the machine check error, which will lead to a system lock up. So yes. is it in such situations, is it possible to use uh, F-Trace? Yes. Uh, you can put a, a common kernel command line parameter to tell the kernel use F-Trace to dump all the uh, call frame. With, with F-Trace, uh, F this call frame can be very uh, clear and uh, uh, with, with human readable names, not seem uh, just uh, address. Yeah, but the system has, has crashed basically, right? It's a lockout. It's a hard lockout. So how, do you, how are you supposed to dump this? Because what I, what I understand okay. is that everything is in the ring buffer, yeah. which means in memory. If the system has, has oh, okay. it out. It, it dump uh, on your screen. Or you can try the uh, net console. So you are, you are if the system is locked up, it can still, oh, it's dumping light? Yes, yes. Yeah, but let's say you're in a situation whereby you do not know when it's going to crash. Yes, so uh, that's, uh, that's why we, talk, uh, we told the kernel use F-Trace to dump that. You don't know when the system will, uh, for example, panic. 
So, so okay, okay. Actually, let, let's put it this way. Uh, to, to read it, you need to dump to this. Okay, uh, you need to write to this, if, right? If the system is okay, you dump with you dump the log from the uh, so from the this file from the trace yeah. file. Okay. But if uh, the system panic, it will dump to the console. If there's no panic. Yes. The panic is the programmer knows there's a problem. Do a panic. But if you have a real problem, the whole thing might just freeze. There's if no chance to even go to panic. The whole system just just locks hard. Okay, you can use the. Uh, because normally, right, for this such situation, you do a kernel call down. So I was, I was wondering whether you can use this instead of doing a kernel call down. If your kernel can uh, accept the, uh, I don't know the, uh, I forgot the name. Uh, LT uh, print screen, you know that uh, key. You can LT print screen and the uh, oh, sys control key. Yes, and the uh, make a uh, kernel to dump the uh, log. Okay, but the screen that means it's going to run like this, which means uh, you can't read, right? Yes, so <laughs> that's that's problem. Um, I think uh, I think the net net console may be more convenient net for console. this. So what's the what's the meaning of the net console? Okay, uh, the console who is not run on your local uh, VGA or zero pole is uh, output through network. That would be the zero port. You're talking about the zero port? Not the zero port or UART. The Ethernet. Ethernet. So, okay, yes. so that one is a hardware thing, right? It's basically the VMC. The, your net console, is it, is it from the oh, Linux oh, not, or is oh, it okay. from the VMC? Net, net console is uh, in support by Linux kernel. It's in the Linux? Yes, yes. You can... I, don't, I never use it. I don't, I don't even get such a thing. But of course, uh, if okay, I show you. Like but if, if the thing is locked up, the net console will be as dead as the kernel. So uh, it's a chance to get the dump, but uh, so not you can, one so job. So net console, that means you can lock somewhere, right? You're saying that yes, you're reading yes. through a network, so you can do a continuous dump through your remote system. Yes, yes. Okay. That's a simple one. So I think uh, maybe you will work while your system not so dead. Okay. And uh, if we, if you are interesting uh, with uh, for example with K prop you can uh, insert the uh, pro point dynamically at the user space. For example, um, you want to check your MySQL, why my uh, query took so long. You can insert the pro point at the start of the query and uh, you can uh, extract, for example, the statement from parameter and print out. And uh, you can insert another uh, pro point to collect the exit time. So you can measure uh, the uh, every statement, uh, the, the average time of uh, average uh, uh, of every statement uh, executed. That's a uh, very interesting one. So, uh, and then all these, all these, uh, and then you don't need to in install another, uh, uh, in the production environment, uh, you make, you make things clean and uh, small to make sure the security uh, not being uh, compromised. So, 
if you uh, want to trace your system and uh, don't want to you uh, install another tools, uh, I think F trace is uh, great for you. So F trace will slow down the system. Uh, I think uh, if uh, it, it depends. It's uh, high efficient, but uh, if you enable uh, mass uh, amount of events, it will s slow down your system. For example, you enable the uh, you you try to log every single uh, system call. That will slow down your system. For I will show you. Can you see? For example, uh, we can use the uh, function tracer to trace every uh, single function call in the kernel. The available uh, tracer you can find in this file. It's a plug device tracer, uh, memory I.O. tracer, function graph tracer, function tracer, and the uh, NAP tracer. So we can echo function to current tracer and echo one to uh, tracing on and uh, see uh, what we got. So, how many current tra tracers can you can you enable at any one time? Uh, no just a uh, start of the of command or return from command. No, I mean the uh, echo function uh, redirect to current tracer. So can you enable more than more than just function? Oh, just one, just one. Any one time, just one? Yes, yes. Because it will affect the output for me. I, I will show you. It's a all function call. Uh, Prior is the coli. The this uh, the later is the color. So you can tra get trace pipe. Trace pipe uh, the content in the trace pipe and the trace is the same, but uh, trace pipe will uh, block your output. If uh, the content have been uh, read out, and uh, if uh, event or log add to the ring buffer, uh, the cat will continue to print out the events. My CPU is so busy now <laughs> because uh, every single function call will be logged in this situation. So. Uh, it's not good for my <laughs> for the production environment. You 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 will uh, reduce your uh, 
throughput of your system. So I stop. I stop the tracing and uh, we can change to function graph to current tracer echo one and uh, enable tracing and see what's different from function tracer. You can see uh, it's more human friendly. Uh, the core hierarchy and uh, it's the uh, the time spent on that system, uh, that function call. You can use it to trace a lot of things. And uh, if you don't want to slow uh, slow your system down, you can add some filter to the uh, F-trace. For example, you want to trace only the uh, scheduler part. Just echo schedule, uh, get uh, star to the, uh, sorry, set trace uh, filter. So now you uh, you can see only uh, functions start with uh, skate skate d skate. So the uh, system on my uh, so the CPU uh, won't won't be so uh, busy like. Uh, uh, like before. What does this tell us? It's a uh, the uh, time system spent on this function call. Okay. Uh, in microsecond, it's a uh, very pre precise. So you can use it to measure your kernel to see. Uh, for example, you uh, you want to trace your boot. Uh, you want to trace your kernel uh, to see why it slow down your uh, boot time. It's a it's a way to do it. Okay. And uh, uh, with. Uh, Uh, with uh, uprop, you can trace uh, trace your uh, user space vacation. Uh, if you uh, are you interested in this, if not, uh, uh, maybe you can see the uh, document from internet. Okay. Uh, do you want me to show that, or just end the? Okay, so thank you.